Now I know at this point Lois is really hoping that I'm going to burst into song and say, all you need is love, da da da. Well, I'm not going to do that. No, no, it wouldn't be very pleasant. <laughs> Um, I read somewhere that there are warnings, that there are two things you should never, ever do. There's probably more than that, but this is saying two things never, ever even contemplate doing. One is never, ever invade Russia in the winter. The second is never tell people the theme of what you're going to speak on because then they go to sleep. So you know now it's love. So you can think to yourself, I know that sure you do. You've heard 1 Corinthians 13 so many times, all these weddings. But the thing is that's really quite annoying at the end of the day is that one day when we stand before God, he's not going to be that interested in what we actually intellectually know and understand. He wants to see if we're living it. So for a sort of heading today, I've put these words, to be rooted and established in love. And as we go along, I'd like you just to think for yourself, as I thought for myself too, am I rooted and established in love or am I rooted and established in lots of other stuff? And I hope that this will uh, talk will encourage you. See, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, God died for us. Now that is amazing and you probably, you know, again you can turn off because you know this, don't you? You know that God loves you so much he died for you. Now let's take it a bit deeper so that it becomes life changing. I'm doing a quote now from Simon Ponsonby's book God is for us, which I think is so worshipful. It says the cross is a monument. It is a monumental memorial to love. He loved us while we were still sinners. He doesn't love us because we are lovely or lovable. He loved us when we were ugly in sin, rebellion, selfishness and idolatry. With our back turned on him. He loved us when we despised and when we dismissed him. He loved us when we were still far off. He saw us from afar and he loved us. And he loved us and loved us and loved us. And nothing, nothing can change that. So I believe that when we have got that rooted and firmly established, we will become different people. It will affect everything about us, everything we believe in, everything that we live. It's an amazing thing to think that God could love someone like me, like you. There might be a few people we have on a pedestal. We think, well, we could understand if he loves that person or that person. He just loves us because he loves us. Now, I've got here the Message Bible, and I'm beginning to think there's a bit of a plot against me because I can't bring my Bible anymore because it's falling to pieces. So I've got the Message Bible, which is now also falling to pieces. So I might one day have to resort to one of the other three Bibles on a shelf in our cupboard. But you see, they're not all marked and dog-eared and full of life. And I'd have to start all over again. But in the Message Bible, it does a sort of paraphrase, as you know. But sometimes it can be quite refreshing to read something a bit different. So this is headed the way of love. And it's just a few verses in the middle of 1 Corinthians 13. Let's listen to these and then we'll look at it again. <laughs> love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. And love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. It takes pleasure in the flowering of truth puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, 
never looks back but keeps going to the end. So this is how we, we walk in love. Now, many years ago, a um, little group I had, I spent six months just doing three words. So every time we met, which was fortnightly, we just did these three words. They're ever so easy. Love and forgive. And every time we met, we went through it. Are you loving and forgiving everyone that crosses your path? So when we started this off, I had to confess to the group that I had three people. Unfortunately, they were all in the church, because often it's within the church that relationships can get a bit sensitive. Three people that I obviously hadn't forgiven for the things they'd said or the things they'd done. Fortunately, one left, so that made it easy, and that got it down to two. And then I actually got it down to one. I thought I was doing really good. And everybody else, we never said the names, you see. We were just looking at this concept. You know, am I forgiving others as God's forgiven me? The answer was no. And eventually there was a time when I got down to none. And I thought, this is so good. And that week somebody really annoyed me. <laughs> so I understand that there is something... <laughs> within us <laughs> that we can easily start to hold grudges and, and resentments and we think that's okay and it's not and when we worked at Stella Carmel in our conference centre there was um, a really nice young girl there of one of our volunteers and she wanted to know the real fullness of God she wanted to be filled with the spirit and all the gifts of the spirit and everything and people had prayed with her and we prayed with her and, and nothing happened uh, that you could see or anything so we sent her away and said don't strive but just spend this evening before God and just ask him to show you are there any people in your life that you haven't forgiven so she went away and she came back the next morning rather sheepish she got 26 names written on a piece of paper 26 people from a young child right through to her middle 20s that she was holding resentment and unforgiveness towards and she wondered why she wasn't being filled with all the fullness of God's Holy Spirit that sort of taught us a lesson I have found personally that one of the foolproof tests of whether I've forgiven someone or not is especially because a lot of them are not here in this area now I can look at a picture of them and if I can look at a picture of them and I think oh that's all right if I can look at a picture of them and even remember that they did this or that or the other but it, my stomach isn't knotting and my hands aren't going like this then that's all right but if I'm looking at a picture of them and instantly I remember what they said where I was what they did what happened afterwards it's not all right it's not settled it's not forgiven it's not over it's not over and done with so looking at this bit in the message just a few little things because this to me is how God is with us it says love never gives up God never gives up on us has he? no, not given up on us all these years he's still faithful and true it says that love doesn't force itself on others and it isn't always me first and then it says it, they doesn't fly off the handle and I shared this at St B's and I, I'm now officially starting a club for door slammers so I got a few people at St B's I'm, I'm happy to be the chairperson and anybody that gets frustrated and walks out of the room and slams the door see me afterwards I'll tell you when we're going to meet now that's how I get rid of my frustration so in our house, in the dining room through to the hall, there are little cracks around the door frame in the plaster where at times in my life I have slammed the door and I've really enjoyed doing it. In fact, sometimes I've even gone back and done it a second time. <laughs> you see, love doesn't fly off the handle, but we can do so much because we don't understand the depth of love. 
It says that love puts up with anything and always looks for the best. Never looks back. And that's important because it's very easy to look back on how things were when they were all better and nicer and, and everything. But God says to us, you know, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you perceive it? And here in our fellowship now, God is doing a new thing. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Are you responding to his move? Because he is doing something new. And I personally believe that it's all connected with this. Uh, there's an excitement now in coming to church because you don't know what he's going to do next. And that's much better than just the set thing week after week after week. God's here. He's God. He can do anything. And he loves us because he loves us because he loves us. So I've written down, uh, just in thinking about this, three stages, if you like. First, I have to understand God's love for me. You really have to put that first. Because, you see, when I really understand that God actually loves me, even with all the rotten, nasty, horrible little things that you can cover up from other people, but he really knows, and he still loves me, that will enable me, I hope, to be more forgiving to people that do rotten, nasty little things to me that hurt me and upset me. Because actually, we're all the same. Sinners saved by grace. Not perfect yet. Seeking to walk in love. But occasionally we mess it up and we mess it up for each other. We mess it up for ourselves. If we find it hard to forgive people, I wonder if it's because we haven't understood how very, very much God's forgiven us. So I ask you a question you don't have to answer, but do you really, really know that God has forgiven you so very, very, very much? Do you know that? Are you rooted and are you established in love? Do your roots go down deep? Not in fear or bitterness or unforgiveness, but do your roots going down deep and they're firmly established in love? Because when they are, when people come and say and do things and things go on around us, we're still in love. We're still in a safe, good place with God. I was very pleased when we had the ministry training that Paul said something I passionately agree with. He probably said lots of things I passionately agree with. But this particular thing, God isn't at work throwing things at us to test us to see if we're still going to stand in him. He isn't busy thinking, what can I devise next to see if they're going to still be faithful, to see if they're still going to trust me. And I was sharing at St. B's an irrational fear that I've had for many years when I was very first saved. I used to have a fear that God would make me go and live in Birmingham. No offence to anybody. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, oh, Shall I change that to Nottingham? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That, that God would make me go and live in Birmingham in a terraced house with a chain smoker. And I actually used to lie awake at night worrying that one day I would end up there. And then one day like, a revelation occurred to me. I'm actually married to Pete. <laughs> He's never smoked in his life. So all is well. I don't have to think that that's the worst thing that could happen to me, that God would test whether I'm faithful. I've since realised that's a teeny little thing to fear whether you think of all the awful things it could be. But God isn't like that. He loves us. He isn't at work giving you nine out of ten each day or two out of ten by how you respond to all the pain and suffering that's going on around you. And when you're rooted and established in love, you can know that whatever is happening around you God loves you, he's for you, and he's never against you. Now in, <coughs> we just find it in this Bible, in Corinthians, no not Corinthians, Ephesians 3, we've got this two or three verses that I felt for a long time are like a word to us as a, as a fellowship. It says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power 
together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God and that's where I got the being rooted and established in love if we got that bit really really right we could know together the power of God's spirit in a whole new way and it's time so we get to know this love we get to be rooted and established in love so that we can have the power of the Holy Spirit together and if you think that's impossible it's quite clever really because in the Bible the next verse is another well known bit now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations for now and ever so when you look at something like 1 Corinthians 13 and you think I can't do that I'm not like that or I do that all the time and I shouldn't remember that we have a greater power at work within us who wants to change us who wants to teach us what love really is that wants us to know how very, very, very deeply we're loved so that we can forgive each other when we mess it up so that we can go out in the power of the Spirit and just another little thing love never fails I, I don't know if you've ever done this but I sometimes I try really, really hard with somebody to show Jesus to them and preach the gospel to them and show them this and I show them that and, and eventually nothing happens so then I try the other thing I try loving them you know that, that actually works because people find it very very hard to resist being loved and, and just to know that one of the things that Satan can never counterfeit because he just doesn't understand it is love he can counterfeit all sorts of other things he can't counterfeit love he doesn't even get it and so in finishing I'd just like to say the words of a, a hymn I suppose it is that really touches me and I'm sure it touches you amazing love how can it be that thou my God should die for me Amen